Abandoned Grace International School, we are located right in Obwase, precisely BDM. The school has a number of facilities that aid in learning. We have qualified and trained teachers who are ready and willing to assist the children. The school has many facilities such as the ICT laboratory. We also have a science laboratory. We also have a library. The school has a number of buses which convey the children from their various destinations to the school premises. We have the football team, we have the drama group, we have a lot and the school is based on the Christian principles. For more inquiries, you can call this number 0541-310-901, 0541-670772. Abandon grace in God we trust. Welcome again, my cherished students. Today, I am happy that we are going to deal with citizenship and human rights. Citizenship and human rights. And so, uh, we are grateful for you to joined me. And today, as I've done in my previous lessons, we are going, as it were, to, as we've seen on the screen, citizenship. Now, the reason why I have carefully selected this topic is the fact that in Ghana, most people do not know their rights. And then, their rights that they don't know has caused a lot of people to abuse them. And I'm going to use this opportunity to let you know some of your basic rights under the 1992 Constitution and some of the causes of this abuse of rights. And so stay with me was I help you in order to avoid people trumpet or triumph over your right. Before I go into human rights, first I want to deal with citizenship. Because the topic is citizenship and human rights. So when I say citizenship, what does it mean? Citizenship simple, simply means membership of a country. Membership of a country. And so when we say a citizen, it means that you are a member of a country. So for example, I can say that I am a citizen of Ghana. The reason being that I owe my membership to Ghana, and that is citizenship. And so, when you hear somebody talking about him being a citizen, he's saying that he is a member of that country. And so, if you are a member of that country, then you are considered to be a citizen. Why am I a citizen of Ghana? And if you are an American, or if you're a German, or if you're Togolese, or you're coming from any part of this world, how do you become a member of Ghana? And so there are certain ways through which one can be a member of a country. And so we are going to again look at how one can become a citizen of a country. And it looks as if this is not only limited to Ghana, it is a universal trend. So let us look at how one we can become a member of a country. Now the basic, the basic way of one being a member of a country is by birth. Now when you are born into a country, then automatically, 
you become a citizen of that country. So we are saying that a person becomes a citizen of Ghana if that person is born by a citizen of Ghana. But if you go to other countries like the United States of America, even if you are a Ghanaian, and then you go and give birth there by their laws, you become a citizen. But because my mother is a Ghanaian and my father is a Ghanaian and I was born in Ghana, or Boise to be precise, it means that I am automatically a Ghanaian. And so if you are also born, or if you were born in Ghana, then you consider yourself to be a member of this country. Number two, by founding. By founding. By founding, we are saying that a child found in Ghana who is seven years and below and whose parents are not known become a citizen of Ghana. So, for example, we've seen some foreigners come into this country or we see some civil wars in other countries and then some of them, they come to Ghana. Some of them are either seven years or below. And when we have seen these people, you cannot trace any of their relatives. And so you become a citizen or you are adopted to be a citizen of this country. You are adopted to be a citizen of this country. And so you become a citizen of this country. Now that is the second part. So when you are found to be a Ghanaian, and you come and then you are found, then automatically you become a citizen of Ghana. Then the third point is by naturalization. By naturalization, we are saying that a foreigner can become a citizen of Ghana if that person applies for Ghanaian membership and meet a certain condition. That person must lose his membership of his country of origin. And so we have seen some footballers of Ghanaian descent. Of Ghanaian descent. Of Ghanaian descent. Now, one typical example is Kevin Prince Watson, who was having a dual citizen, being a Ghanaian as well as a German. But when he wanted to play for Ghana in 2010, he decided to, as it were, play for this country by denouncing his German citizenship. Again, he may not even have a Ghanaian descent, but because he wants to adopt Ghana as his country, he may decide to denounce his country of origin and go through processes and acquire a membership of this country. And that is what we call by naturalization. So naturalization simply means a foreigner who wants to become a Ghanaian and have applied and have gone through all the necessary conditions. And then the fourth point is by registration or marriage. We are saying that a foreigner who is married to a Ghanaian can become a citizen of Ghana if he registered the marriage under the law. And so we have seen a lot of Ghanaians also go into Europe, even though it is not the best practice, and I'm advising you to avoid it. Because they want membership of that country, they will marry that a pe person from that country, and then when they register their marriage, they become automatic take citizen. And so if you are a Togolese and you come to Ghana, you marry a Ghanaian, and then you register your marriage under the laws of Ghana, you are considered to be a Ghanaian. And so that is by registration or marriage. Then the next point is by adoption. We are saying that a person who is 16 years and below 
and has been adopted by a Kenyan by law becomes a citizen of Ghana. And so if you are a Ghanaian and then you go to America and you adopt a citizen of America and then you bring the person to Ghana, if the adoption has gone through all the necessary process and then the person has become your child, by law in Ghana, that person is no longer considered to be an American. You are considered to be a Ghanaian since you have been adopted by Ghanaian and then you have gone through all the process or the necessary uh, laws. Then the next one is by descent. A person can become a citizen of a state of a state if he can trace his parents, grandparents, and great grandparents to the country. We have seen some footballers recently I have read a story about Ross Buckley. If you, those of you who are football lovers, he plays for Chelsea. I recently read that he wants to trace his father to Nigeria because he's been told that he is of Nigerian descent. And so either your grandfather, your great-grandfather, or if your mother or your father is a Ghanaian and you are even born and raised in any part of the world. Because you have one of your relatives, either your grandfather or your father or your uh, great-grandfather is of Ghanaian descent, you may be granted citizenship of this country. And then the seventh point is by honoring uh, confirmment. By honoring confirmment simply means that the state can give citizenship to foreigners who have made great contribution to the state. And so if I go to America, and then I'm able to contribute immensely to the development of America, they can confer citizenship to me. Similarly, if somebody is a Briton, and he comes to Ghana, and try to help our scientists to develop a vaccine for the COVID-19 to help save the Ghana situation. He may be a hero in this country, and the president, by law, can confer citizenship to him if he so wish. And by so doing, he becomes a citizen of this country. So these are ways through which people can become a citizen of this country. Now, let us go and see some of the rights. Rights. So now that you have become a citizen, either by birth or by adoption or by confirmment or by registration or by nationalization, if you have gone through any of this, then you are a member. When you become a member, then what is your right? You must know your rights. But before we go into rights, the question we ask ourselves is what is right? You should know your rights before we can even talk about the basic rights that you must have. And so when we talk about rights, rights simply means the privileges that you enjoy as a result of your membership in a country. So we have some privileges. We have some advantages that one will have to enjoy as a result of his or her membership in the country. For example, if you want to go to America, then you need what do, a permit card in order to move around. But if you are an American, you don't need a permit card to move around. So that is a privilege that they have given to you so that you don't need a permit card as an American citizen to move around. And that privilege is what we call right. Similarly, if you are a foreigner and then you come to Ghana, you need a card. They call it Ghana card. And that Ghana card will give you permission to be able to move around. But if you are a Ghanaian, you can travel to any part of this country without re restriction or without a Ghana card. And that is what we call right. They are privileges that you enjoy as a result of your membership in this country. And so 
we have to go through some of the basic rights. And so if you know some of these rights, then once somebody is abusing it, then you can stand for it. The first one is that the individual citizen has the right to life or the right to live. Now, this is the basic or the fundamental human right. Now, this right says that no other person can take the life of another person unless court decides. In Ghana, it is only the competent court or it is only the judiciary that has the right and the extreme condition to take the life of someone. Apart from that, if you are not in the court or if it is not court, that has pronounced death sentence under rare situations. Nobody has the right to kill or take away somebody's life. And so we call it the fundamental human right or natural right. These are God-given rights that everybody must live and die naturally and nobody must take their life. And so you must understand that the court has the right if you had uh, committed a crime that is considered to be uh, punished by death, the law may decide and sanction it appropriately. The second point is right to personal liberty. Right to personal liberty. The word liberty simply means freedom. And so every individual has the right uh, to move about as he decides. And no other person should abuse this right unless it is decided by court of the country. And so once again, you cannot say I cannot move from Abwasi to Kumasi or from Kumasi to Accra. Nobody has the right to decide whether you are the military or you are the police or you are the president or you are the member of parliament, you do not have that right to decide unless you have acquired uh, uh, or it is backed by law and the laws are interpreted by the court. And so if you are saying that I cannot uh, move about, then it must be pronounced by the court or you need the backing of law to do that. Without the law saying that, then nobody has the right to restrict your movement. And so when the president of Ghana wanted to impose a uh, partial lockdown, he had gone to uh, parliament to take the right to imposition bill that would enable him to restrict movement of people. And without this bill, the president couldn't have done that. And so without the backing of law, even the president does not have the power to restrict the, the movement of people or to uh, triumph over people's liberty. The third point is that we have legal rights. And for legal rights, you are saying that every individual has the right to go to court to address his problems. And he or she must be given a fair trial and that he or she can take a lawyer to defend him or her and also make sure that he does not suffer any wrong arrest. Now, once a legal right, as I've explained or read to you, when you think that somebody has committed an offense, you must give the person a fair, a fair hearing. You cannot prosecute and sentence somebody without giving the person a proper hearing. And that if the person does not have the legal brain to make a defense, he has the right to, to hire a lawyer. And in if, if, fact, if you go to other jurisdictions, which is the best practice, even when the person does not have money to hire a lawyer, the country will have to give the person an attorney an attorney is a state lawyer to defend the person until the person is proven either innocent or guilty. 
And so when you people have accused you, you are saying that nobody has committed an offense unless proven by court. And so when people have accused you, you must be taken to court. You may be asked to defend whether you are guilty or not until you are, are prosecuted and then given sentence. And that is what we refer to as legal right. Then we also have the social right. And for social rights, we are saying that every individual has the right to go to court to address his problem. Sorry. We are saying that every citizen is supposed to enjoy social facilities of the state. Social simply means being able to enjoy social facilities of the state. And some of these facilities are schools, hospitals, parks, and gardens, libraries, you must have electricity, uh, water, and telephone. When you are a Ghanaian and you have the means, you can attend any school in this country without restriction. You must have access to potable drinking water. You must have access to good roads. You must have access to uh, what you call a good education or quality education without anybody trying to prevent you to do so. In short, all the facilities in this country, as a citizen, you have the right to enjoy it without anybody preventing you to do so. The fifth point is political right. And for political right, we are saying that this includes the right to vote and to be voted for in an election. What that means is that in Ghana, you can, enjoy, uh, you can join any political party of your choice. Whether you want to join MPP or CPP or uh, NDC or PNC or NDP without anybody forcing you to choose a particular political party or to vote for any particular political candidate. At the same time, an abuse of your right when your husband tells you to vote for a particular party because that is what he support and then you are against that political party when that happens we are saying that it is it is unfortunate and today i am drawing your attention that you cannot be forced to join a political party or vote for a political party that is against your wish and then if you also want to stand an election in any political party or as an independent candidate Nobody can prevent you to do so because you have that political power or political right to be uh, voted for or to vote for somebody. And finally, we are saying that uh, we are saying that the right to hold public office and the right to express opinion or ideas in public. What I am doing is public, and as I'm teaching, I am being watched by towers. Now understand that this is a public speech. No political party can ask me to stop what I'm doing. They dare not. Not NPP, not NDC, not even the president. Because I have the right to air my views on any issues that is out in this country. But I must do that, and I must do that with uh, decorum. I must do it with respect, with honesty, and I must do it uh, with... Uh, what we call it, uh, constructive way. It should be constructive, not just you have the right so you can just say the things that you want to say. Make sure what you're saying is factual, it is right, it is done in a more respectable manner in order not to also abuse someone. Then we have the sixth point. That is the right to human dignity. For the right to human dignity, we are saying that every individual must be respected and no person should be made to suffer pain or inhuman treatment unless the court has decided to do so. Now we are saying that unless the court decides that he's taking your freedom of movement and put you to prison, nobody has the right to make you suffer. Nobody has the right to make you suffer. And then even when you have uh, committed a crime, your punishment must only be prescribed 
or meted to you by court. And so when people are abusing you either by beating you or by insulting you, uh, you have the right to take the person out, up because they don't have the right to do so. Then we have, the next one is equality and freedom from discrimination. Everybody is equal before the law. The president, which, who is the number one citizen, and me, a teacher, they call me the ordinary citizen. By law, they see us equal under the law. And so we are saying that all peoples shall be equal before the law and that no person shall be discriminated against because of sex, whether you are male or female or you are black or white or because you are Muslim or you are a Christian or you are a traditionalist. No religion uh, can discriminate against you and no tribe, whether you are an Ewe or you are a Khan or you are a Gonja, you must have equal right before the law. So do not allow somebody to abuse your right just because you are a woman and so a man can decide to do whatever he wants to do with you. No, the law enjoins that whether you are a male or you are a female, whether you are a farafara or you are the gati, whether you are a Christian or you are a Muslim, by law, you are the same. Nobody is greater than you. Not even the president. The president by role. The president is bigger than me in terms of role. But in terms of rights, we are the same. And then we must be treated equally. If I commit a crime, I must be prosecuted for it. If the president commits a crime, he must be prosecuted for it. If a, a member of parliament commits a crime, he must be prosecuted for it and then the punishment for the same crime irrespective of sex race religion it must be treated the same and this is mr samson who is saying so then the next one is fundamental freedoms fundamental freedoms we are saying that all persons shall have the freedom of speech and expression all persons shall have the freedom of speech and expressions of thoughts to practice any religion of assembly, of association, and of movement. Except that the association or the religion does not do things that are against the laws of the state. Now, if you are born a Muslim, it is not automatic to be a Muslim. And so if your father is forcing you to be a Muslim because you are of a Muslim descent, it is against your fundamental freedom. It is not compulsory to be a Christian just because your mother or your father attend church A or church B. You have the right to decide which religion you want to take and then which association you want to join. Like I said, it is not compulsory to join any political party because your wife or your husband or your parent or your headmaster or whatever wants to force you to become. If you don't know, today I'm drawing your attention and I'm passionate about it, though not emotional. Then the next one is right to education. This should have been my second point. Because every citizen had a right to formal education. There were times where women were told that their place is in the kitchen. But today, it is no longer the case. It is no longer the case. Whether you are a Muslim or you are a Christian, whether you are an account or not, whoever you are, the law enjoins that you should be educated to any level that you have the means without anybody trying to frustrate you. Please, if you want to attend school, you are of liberty to do that. And that is the 
passage right. And all these nine rights that I have uh, listed and explained are enjoined and enshrined in the 1992 Constitution. And so it is backed by law. Even though I am not a luminary in law, that is why I'm saying that it is fundamental. It is basic. Even if you don't know law, these things should be on your fingertips. Now I come to human rights abuse. People are abusing these rights. The right to life, the right to uh, social, uh, political rights, uh, fundamental freedoms, people are abusing it. And that is why today I am passionate about it and I want to try as much as possible to remove this canker. So when we say human rights abuse, what does it mean? It simply refers to the infringement on the right and freedom of an individual. When all the rights that I have above mentioned are being infringed upon, or when people deny you in simple terms the right and these freedoms, it means that that person is abusing your rights. And so you are saying that it is the preventing other citizens from enjoying the freedoms and the rights that is given to them by the Constitution, as I have outlined above. So let us first of all outline some of these causes of human rights abuse. Let us outline some of these causes. Number one. So back to the screen. Quickly, we are going to look at some of these there. The first thing that I want to talk about is that we have child labor as one of the forms of human right abuse. Child labor. This is the practice where children are made to work above their strength and or to be engaged in economic activities. In economic activities. Understand this. By law, if you are not 16 years or 18 years and above, you are not allowed to work in this country. I remember in my school, we once wanted an IT teacher. We had a young lady who had applied, who had eight A's from secondary school. And as a head of department in academics, we had interviewed this, this girl, even though he had not written his age in application letter. But we have gone through his CV and we have loved it. But during the interview, I asked the girl about her age. And then the girl had said she was 16. And so management would quickly have to withdraw her from, from the applicants because she was underage. And it is on record. So what we're saying is that when you have not attained certain age, you cannot engage in economic activities. But if you go into the streets, you see people engaging themselves in trading even when they are young. And others are young and yet they are made to do some work which is above their strength. And when that happens, we say we are abusing the person's right. The second point is child neglect. And this is where parents fail to provide the need of their children. Now, in Ghana, we have three basic needs food, clothing, and shelter. But if you challenge me, I am going to add education to it. So I'm going to make it four. Food, clothing, shelter, and education. These are the basic needs that every parent must strive to provide for. And that if these four, food, clothing, shelter, and education are denied, then it is a form of an abuse. The next one is rape and defilement. Rape is simply having sex with someone without his or her consent. The note simply say, hey, 
but I've seen women also raping men. In America recently, a girl was sentenced to life imprisonment for raping a male under gunpoint. And so, but uh, normally rapes are done by male, uh, males. And so if you have sex without somebody's consent, then you're saying that you are raping the person. If it happens in marriage, you don't be surprised because if you want to have sex with your wife and your wife does not agree and then you force yourself on the wife, it will be deemed as rape. And so women should take note if they are watching. Defilement, on the other hand, is having sex with a girl below 18 years, even with her consent. I have seen teachers having sex with their pupils, and then when they are taken to court, they say that these students are their girlfriends, and so they, they have agreed to have sex. If somebody is 18 years and you have sex with a person, whether the person agrees or not, he is, he will be considered to have defiled the person. The reason is that by law in Ghana, 18 years, you are deemed to be too young to understand some of the things you are doing. And so even though you may say you consented, but the law may agree that you do not understand what you are saying because you are young. Then the next one is domestic slavery. Domestic slavery. And this is a situation where People are made to overwork in the house. So it can be your own child. He works from morning to dawn. From morning to dawn. From morning to dawn. 24-7. If we do that, we call it domestic slavery. And then that must be avoided. Then the fifth point is widowhood rights. Widowhood rights. And this is where women who have lost their husbands are made to go through some inhuman treatment. In Ghana, some of them, they bath the cops and they ask, they ask the woman to drink the water they use to bath the cops. Some of them are kept in the house for about 40 days in the room. Some of them are not given food for days. Others are asked to, to sleep on, on rocks as pillows. They call them widowhood rights. All these things are against the laws of the state. And if you do that, it means that you're abusing people's rights. Then we have FGM. That is female genital mutilation. And I say that this is a situation where a girl's clitoris is cut off with a blade or a razor. And in Ghana, they have decriminalized that. Uh, sorry, they have criminalized that. And so if you do that, it's against the law, you can be arrested and prosecuted. So I am enjoining all of you who are still practicing it to stop abusing people's rights. Then finally, discrimination because of sex, religion, language, or tribe. You must not look down upon any tribe or um, whether the person is a frafra or the Gati, we are all Ghanaians, whether the person is a Muslim or a Christian, we are all Ghanaians, whether he speaks a chi or he speaks fancy. We are all Ghanaians. We are all treated under the law equally. And so if you are going to look down upon somebody because of religion, sex, language, or tribe, then it is unfortunate and we say you are abusing the person's rights. So we go to the next point. The next point that we are going to uh, look at is the causes. Why do people abuse human rights? And then one of the causes is ignorance. Ignorance. And so when people do not know about the laws, they can be, as it were, be abused. And so it is rather unfortunate that people are abusing others and the rest. Then another way which people are ab right, uh, abused is law, law enforcement of laws. When there are no uh, enforcement of laws, then people's rights can be uh, abused. And then we are saying that in Ghana, another cause is illiteracy. A people level of education in this country is low. And the more you are educated, the more you are enlightened to understand some of these things. 
because my time is up, I want to wrap up with uh, how to prevent human rights abuse. So let me take you through it quickly. Number one, as I said, we need education because education is the uh, way that people will be enlightened and people's rights are abused because of that. And so you're saying that people uh, should be given education on human rights, like I'm doing, uh, so that they will know and prevent them. Number two is commission on human rights and administrative justice, sludge. This must be set up in all regional and district capitals. And these are going to look into and fight for people who write our bills. Then we have effective court system. Uh, when people don't see that the court are doing their right, their work well and pronouncing justice, uh, people take the law into their own hands and people are people's rights are uh, abused. A typical example is lynching of uh, suspected thieves or armed robbers. But if the court system is eff effective, they can be prosecuted and then deal with appropriately. Then the next one is free press. We are saying that the media, that is the FM station, the TV stations, uh, the radio station, the newspapers, the magazines, they should be given the rights and the freedom to be able to deal and report cases uh, without being abused. Then the last one is that uh, we must have effective police, uh, police system, effective police system, and that the police must be equipped with resources such that they are able to do their work and then uh, people who abuse the laws can't be arrested. But finally, which people are the sufferers of uh, human rights? Mostly we have women, we have children, we have poor people, we have the disabled people, those who have not gone to school, they are illiterate, or those who are less represented group, that is those who are the minority are mostly abused. So this is where we are going to end our lessons for the sake of time. I'm going to end here. Next time we meet, I am going to talk about uh, duties and then responsibilities. I hope you enjoyed me next time. My name is Mr. Samsonani. May God bless you for joining me. Have a blessed day. Abandon Grace International School, we are located right in Obwase, precisely BDM. The school has a number of facilities that aid in learning. We have qualified and trained teachers who are ready and willing to assist the children. The school has many facilities such as the ICT laboratory. We also have a science laboratory. We also have a library. The school has a number of buses which convey the children from their various destination to the school premises. We have the football team. We have the drama group. We have a lot. And the school is based on the Christian principles. For more inquiries, you can call this number 0541 310 901. 0541 670772. Abandon grace in God we trust.